This dilapidated mansion was built 200 years ago. It was the home of a rich and mysterious eccentric called Joseph Williamson. But it's not his house I'm interested in, but what he built beneath it. Oh, it's a pretty narrow entrance, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's some entrance. This is much more than just the basement of a mansion. It's enormous and it's actually really impressive. I'm in a huge network of chambers and passages. So Williamson's house would have been up above. 300 meters of tunnels have been discovered so far. It's believed that this is only a small part of the system stretching for almost a mile. This brickwork is beautiful, and the way it mixes in with the sandstone. Williamson seems to have deliberately spent time and effort making these tunnels much more impressive than his house above ground. But why? Even at the time, Williamson kept the purpose of this space a secret. Now, two centuries on, I'm here to discover more about the man himself and what these tunnels were really for. They've even got intricate shapes carved in here. These arches wouldn't look out of place in a church or a grand cathedral. And that's a clue to one of the theories. Williamson is known to have been an extremely religious man who believed in a final day of judgment. Some think he built the tunnels as a shelter to escape the inevitable apocalypse. He certainly kept his friends guessing what he was up to. Williamson did used to come down into his tunnels. And apparently, on one occasion, he invited his friends and local dignitaries round to his house for a banquet. When they arrived, they were welcomed with a banquet presented on a rough old table with shoddy cutlery consisting of bacon and beans. Needless to say, some of them weren't too impressed and left immediately. Legend has it then that those who remained were brought down and presented with a real banquet, a banquet fit for a king. And that's how Williamson found out who his real friends were. That eccentric, maybe. It sounds like an elaborate parable to teach his friends a lesson in morality. But was it religion which led him to build his tunnels? Or shrewd business sense? I've come to another section of the tunnels to see if they offer any clues. One theory was that Williamson was terrified that an apocalyptic catastrophe was on its way. But Dave Bridson from the Williamson Tunnels Heritage Center has other ideas. So what, what are we looking at here? If you go back 250 years, you've got to imagine we're standing in an open air trench. Dave believes this place was a disused quarry when Williamson bought it and the brick archways you can see around us were added by him later. He basically purchased this land very cheaply. He decided that if he roofed over the quarries, he'd create platforms of level land that he could then build on, build his houses, build the gardens behind them. So by reclaiming this wasteland, Williamson could afford to build an extravagant home worthy of Liverpool's rich elite. He was known to have been a very wealthy man who retired at 49 with a fortune worth 50 million pounds in today's money. But if he was so rich, why not buy a plot of land which was ready to go? Williamson was a poor boy. He was about 11. Um, basically, he was forced to leave home and seek his fortune. He got a job, essentially apprenticed to a tobacco merchant in Liverpool and worked his way up through the company, eventually married the boss's daughter and inherited the company. Having gone from rags to riches? Yeah. Dave also believes that Williamson's impoverished roots inspired him to build the tunnels. 200 years ago, poverty was rife in Liverpool. Hundreds of soldiers returned from the Napoleonic Wars 
and work was scarce. From contemporary records, we believe he was employing at least several hundred people at a time and probably more at the peak because they were building the arches here to create these tunnels and the level land. He was then employing other men to build the houses and lay out the gardens on top of them. The building work on Williamson's house was finished by 1805, but he was still employing people to work on the tunnels right up until his death in 1840. By then, he'd spent half his retirement fund on the project. For years, he provided hundreds of jobs to locals who otherwise would have been unemployed. So yes, he got his house out of it, but there's a philanthropic side to his character as well. But it's not just what these tunnels tell us about Williamson, which is fascinating. Their position under the city has also filled them with clues about life in Victorian Liverpool. Here, Rob, trying to get your hands dirty. Straight in, is it? Straight into it, yeah. All right. What am I doing? This. Just shovel onto there, yeah. into the buckets. And straight out in here. Straight into there, yeah. So, what is Every this stuff we're actually digging up here? It's all spoil. After Williamson died, his tunnels fell into disuse. This is what we're looking for, items like this. Just found it here now? Just found it here now. And over the following two centuries, they've become a dumping ground for fly tippers. Down here, one man's rubbish is another man's treasure. These tunnels are being dug out, and the finds discovered here give a rare insight into the area's history over the past 200 years. It gives an idea what, was, what they were using, the clothes and the wall, we found quite a few shoes. It gives us a good idea what they were doing. And even the technology they had in their houses. Got a found here? Feel the weight of that? Is it heavy? It is heavy. Oh, jeez, yeah. Flipping it. And not only that, the finds are starting to build a picture of the shops and businesses which once lay overhead. A vast amount of pottery found in one tunnel suggests a pub or a hotel might have existed directly above it over a hundred years ago. Look at all this. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a real treasure trove. One of the nicest things we, we have is uh, this cup here. If I shine my torch into the bottom of it, you can see it's actually Edward the Seventh. That's fantastic. Unbelievable that that was done. It might not seem much like real treasure, but the finds discovered here below ground are helping to bring alive the past above ground in a way that records alone simply can't do. Every day you come down here, you never oh, know what you're going to find. Like small boys in one sense. If you give a small boy a shovel, what does he do? He digs a hole looking for treasure. And the treasure for us is the archaeology of the structure itself. You're giving me this shovel here, and I'm pretty happy digging away as well. I'm going to see you back here next week as well, then. <sighs> We may never know what was going on in Williamson's head when he built his tunnels. An elaborate job creation scheme or safeguarding himself against impending doom. But one thing's clear, I bet he'd be astonished to see how they've become a mine of information about the generations who lived here after his reign as the King of Edgehill. <laughs>